Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. And we're zooming in and focusing in on a super important and crucial concept when it comes to healing through a narcissistic or psychopathic relationship. And that is attachment. What does a narcissist have to do with it? And attachment, what does a psychopath have to do with it? And how does limbic resonance, um, empathy, the mirror neurons that are part of a natural physi physiology of a human being, what does love and connection or disconnect and suffering have to do with the relationship? Now, it's really important that you understand the feeling aspect of healing. There's a wonderful book called, um, it's called A General Theory of Love, and it's by Dr. Thomas Lewis and Dr. Fari Amini, and it talks about the three um, aspects of the human brain, um, the limbic system, the brain system, and the prefrontal cortex, basically the three brains that have developed over millions and millions of years that you have the pri privilege of operating in just a phenomenal really um, aspect of it being a human being. So there's years, it's to understand that there's millions of years of evolution that have been part of your brain, your brain stem, the oldest part of your brain. And then there's the limbic system, which is like the emotional brain, and then the prefrontal cortex, which is your thinking brain. It's to get that healing takes place in the limbic brain. And um, limbic meaning the emotional, the feeling aspect. You know, feelings that like well up. You know, your feelings when you see a great uh, piece of artwork and you're like, OMG, look at that. You know, you're not analyzing it, you're feeling it. When you hear like a beautiful symphony, you know, you're there in person, you're at the opera and you hear something, you know, the way uh, a man or a woman sings and you're brought to tears and you don't even know the language. Um, you hear a uh, you know, a prodigy play piano or a child prodigy play violin and you get the goosebumps. You're like, oh my God, that is miraculous. Or you, you know, some of the incredible child singers, you know, that have these like incredible voices, just like these, wow, you know, just miraculous human beings. And you just feel like you're lifted up. Your, your dopamine is going, your limbic system is, you know, on fire and you're like, you feel a sense of connection. That is limbic resonance. That's, you know, your, your mirror neurons that are like latching on. They're like, wow, I feel you. I get this. This is magnificent. And you feel uplifted. You feel love. You feel like you can talk. You can hug people. You can, you know, stand shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, you know, hold hands, you know, and, and speak to somebody holding their hands. There's a sense of connection. You know, um, and this is known as limbic resonance and it's very much akin to the attachment, the deep bond that takes place between a mother and their infant, their mother and their infant, one days old, two, five, seven, you know, the really, really early stages, really where the infant is nothing but a limbic brain, a clean slate that's looking to monitor and have that really deep eye contact with that mother and monitor their their mother's face and watch all the tiny muscles you know you'll see infinites if you ever you know you're just out and about shopping and you see a tiny baby you know and you get their attention notice how they like lock eyes with you and they're oh you know they're making smiles and they're just really looking for that connection that is known as limbic resonance and that is the state where healing really takes place when you're working through an attachment problem with people who are narcissistic or psychopathic. These individuals who have a personality disorder, an issue, a problem, whatever it is, there's an attachment problem there. There's a bond problem. You know, you want to bond, you want to have limbic resonance, you want to be able to have eye contact share securely and safety with people. That's a natural human drive for people who have empathy, who have, you know, they have it all going on up there. They want to be able to be safe, have eye contact, smile, feel each other, you know, 
you know, be able to listen, be able to talk, have the two-way interaction and have this done in love. Basically love meaning the absence of fear and being able to really sort of have that, that full on limbic connection. And, you know, this is a, a really crucial aspect to healing. Um, and it's really interesting. Um, there's been studies that have been done as to what happens when, when infants, um, humans or rhesus monkeys are deprived of this. Um, you know, it's important. They, they talk about how mothers use, they've got universal signs that teach their body, their baby's emotion in their face, you know, and they teach this about, you know, things about the world to their babies. And, you know, you'll see child, you know, babies who constantly monitor their, their mother's expression, you know, their, um, you know, they're mimicking or they will mirror back. If their mother makes an angry face, then the baby will make a face, um, you know, so, and, you know, they will then, you know, mimic and be attuned to. And so it's interesting because they are trying to connect. This is a social, um, a psychosocial concept, you know, that this is how you bond and connect and then you learn how to interact with the world. So a baby is born with no limbic programming. So they're just really fresh, clean states. And they need continual feedback from their mother um, just to even basically run their normal physical expressions. Um, and they, you know, babies develop limbic resonance with their mother. So there's this really like primal connection that they feel. Um, and they become attuned to internal states internal states. Um, and so, and then so a secure attachment is when you can have eye contact, the mother hugs, the mother sues, the mother coos, you know, the mother is there and they, you develop that secure attachment. And, um, you know, and this is very much important to healing because this is really where the breakdown occurs with people who are narcissistic. They just don't have the ability to be able to experience and give that limbic resonance. In fact, you know, studies have been done with rhesus monkeys back in the fifties, um, where, uh, I'm just trying to think who, who did it. Um, uh, I mean, as, uh, oh, sorry, it says, uh, Dr. Um, Ed, uh, Tronic of University of uh, Boston. He also did an interesting, um, it's like a freeze face, um, a study with, with infants and when mothers just looked at them with like a blank slate and didn't have any emotion, didn't have any expression, the children would basically spiral into a fit of despair, start crying, look confused because there's no feedback loop. You know, there's no teaching, there's no give and take. There's that sort of stifling of emotion. There's no empathy. Um, and you know, you can, you can see this on YouTube. Um, it's called the still face experiment, um, by Dr. Ed Tronic of university of, Bo of Massachusetts, Boston. And so, you know, if you give like a still barren face and the baby doesn't get any feedback, they go into a tailspin, unable to even maintain body posture. Um, and then when the mother resumes their normal empathetic expressions, the baby is like visibly relieved, like, oh, there's the source of my world. There's the source of my world. And then, you know, um, basically then you can become socialized, you know, but if there's a break in this, there is a broken feeling of connection and a disconnect. And this is very difficult to repair. And so prolonged lack of attention will, can really, um, you know, uh, be problematic. And, and so if they, if the child does not get a chance to restore this, they can become traumatized. And so, yes, you can see then how traumatization can occur, um, occur in infants, but it also occurs in that same limbic resonance when you're in relationships with those people whom you are close to i.e. family members, i.e. spouses, your siblings with whom you might have grown up with, including limbic resonance when you are in a collaborative setting, 
um, say, you know, in, um, you know, in the creative brainstorming groups that I've done, I mean, it is a collaborative effort. Your, your soul is naked. You are having a limbic resonant moment. You know, you are, you are, you are the music, you know, you are the inspiration. You are like that spark, which is just going and going and going. And, you know, you are having a, a connection, you know, you're having a moment, just like when you go to a good concert and you're like, oh, that was a great song. You know, you are having limbic resonance. Now there's a breakdown in this, I feel, um, with, with people who are narcissistic or especially when you get further onto the spectrum, uh, those individuals, and it is uh, like super cold today. So we are like trying to like button up here. Um, so, um, you know, especially with people who are psychopathic, they they don't have that same emotional musculature or like facial expressions in my in my uh, viewpoint, so they're they're not giving you that same feedback. So even though you can't pick up on it consciously, you can pick up on it subconsciously that there is something wrong, there's something awry. And if you've ever seen the mass drop um, from a psychopath, I mean, there's just a devoid of emotion. Um, you know, there's this attachment breakdown. So what does attachment have to do with it? There's an attachment problem. There's not, this limbic resonance does not have a chance to be created. That, that norepinephrine is starting to hijack. You know, the stress chemicals are starting to come in versus the dopamine and the oxytocin. So you're feeling like you're going to launch into this. You're lo like, you're like that infant losing the body posture, spiraling into despair. You know, what, where's my feedback loop? So that's why it's, I feel it's very crucial in healing that there is this resensitization re that takes place within yourself. So you can be, have a, a cool, calm body that is at peace and is at rest, you know, and is able then to receive and then be resensitized and realize, um, and we talk about that in the book that I'm working on, like it's important for all your senses, your five, you know, all your, your senses, but also sort of your higher order of thinking and feeling your higher consciousness needs to also be resensitized and given attention on a deliberate manner and realize how important that this limbic resonance, in other words, being able to truly connect with others is crucially important to your healing because you are social. You know, you're a social human being. You need to have heart to heart and not just fake, fake book, Facebook, you know, likes, but real conversations, real eye contact, real content, real substance where, you know, there's this, I get this, I feel this experience. You know, we talk about the youth of today and how they're so isolated from each other. You know, you'll drive by, you know, a Starbucks and you'll see, or you'll go for your coffee and you'll see the quote unquote millennials or the teenagers of today sitting at a round table, four of them all with their phones and they're looking at their phones and they're not looking at each other. It is my, my feeling and my concern that these individuals are going to be missing out on that very important aspect of limbic resonance. And they're kind of catapulting into that narcissistic void where they become pathologically self-important, you know, only self-interest. What can I da, 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 da. They're, they're not sort of having a shared experience, a shared moment, you know, short, a shared experience. Look at, you know, Look at that mountain, look at that lake, look at that sea, look at that open field, you know, wow, look at that sunshine or look at that rainbow. So there's, they're, they're missing out on that sort of substance of life. And that is really the devoid, the attachment void. So if you're feeling like this cognitive dissonance that, in other words, there's this big void in the relationship, but everybody else is, you know, chatty you know, chatty Kathy or, you know, talking up the narcissist, realize that the disconnect is because there is that void of empathy and limbic resonance, Limb, the limbic brain, you're feeling emotional brain. It's an actual aspect, to, you know, it's, it's part of what you have. Um, and it's an old aspect of the brain. So 
The thinking analytic brain, which is constantly evolving, the prefrontal cortex has the higher order of thinking, which is, you know, the intellectual that can help process and kind of sort information. The limbic brain, though, what is what you really need to live in. Get into that limbic brain. Really begin to have that feeling of closeness, you know, connection. And if that develops within you, you know, and then it can go to, you know, things that you share with other people or plants or pets, you know, pet therapy, um, art therapy, music therapy, um, doing things that bring love and light into your, your environment where you feel that limbic, you know, resonance, you know, things that are upping your energetic vibration, i.e. keeping you inspired, happy. Ask yourself continually, what can I do to make myself more comfortable? Can I, you know, go ahead and, you know, uh, put something warm on my feet? What can I do to make myself more comfortable after you do that? Continue to ask yourself the question. And what can I do to make myself more inspired? And then put, you know, and build it out from there. So the healing is like a scalable step-by-step. Like you're adding, you know, very beautiful scaffolding onto a brownstone that has been, you know, gutted out. You're kind of gutting things out when you're going through the detachment with somebody who you really can't attach with. So that's part of the problem while you're feeling this cognitive dissonance is because there's this drive to connect, which is the limbic system, but there's not the limbic resonance. There's not the eye contact. There's not the squaring up of, you know, the facial muscles um, where you're able to sort of feel the energy coming from them or, you know, things like that where you're, you know, able to smell their perfume or smell their clean hair or their clean lotion or their aftershave, you know, that sort of limbic resonance, which becomes created and developed through people who you can trust, who have empathy, who, you know, the narcissist oftentimes can be very, you know, shell like very shelly meaning very um you know uh surfacey very um what's the other word that people might say if you know uh you know that they're just very um catty you know um so they're not really talking heart to heart it's just all about sort of talking smack throwing mud you know it's what i would call negative water cooler talk in other words, you know, it's like the group of, you know, employees who, who hover around the water cooler or the vending machine or whatever and just talk smack about one employee who's doing really well. Those sort of things. They're just this, you know, they're always trying to shoot down the good guy. Find fault. The fault finders of the good. You know, they're trying to take their arrow, the poison, poison arrow tip, and put it where good resides. So, um... And so it's it's important that what you might feel, you know, is that missing, that core, that loneliness, is that limbic resonance. Um, a lot of viewers ask, you know, I've gone no contact, but I'm still hurting. I've gone no contact for nine months and I'm still hurting. You know, I'm not progressing. This takes time. Okay, this is, you know, a long heal. This is a long recovery. You know, it's, this is not a four to six week you know, um, you know, my broken rib healed or, you know, I got a scratch and, you know, it's healed over this, you know, this is emotional healing. This is, you know, you're healing years and years and decades of this issue, you know, where you have not received the limbic resonance, you know, that you need, you, you require in order to feel healed and to feel like a human being that you are, kind of a unit into and of yourself that is able to then socialize on this, you know, with healthy, healthy others. But, and this begins in the formative stages. So if there's a disruption there, you can understand then why people go looking for love in all the wrong places, as they say. So give yourself that gift of limbic resonance with others and then cultivating that like, you know, like a, a culture, you know, you might say, oh, that person is extremely cultured. It's because they have drawn from a lot of resources. Find that resourcefulness within yourself to understand what 
encourages, enhances, and expands limbic resonance, connection, love, warmth, eye contact, you know, um, a, a agreement, in that those empathy neurons that can be lit up and then fired up within you in the positive. So you can, you know, um, experience that sort of bond of friendship and connection, those links. Um, there's all sorts of cultures that have um, names for this. You know, some people call it fellowship. Um, you know, the Indian culture has another specific name for this experience in life. Um, you know, whether you call it soul bonding or connection or fellowship, you know, it's something that you feel and it's a good feeling and it feels that, you know, uplifting and inspiring. So you want to really experience that throughout your day, not just, you know, once a week, you know, once every Sunday where you feel uplifted and then down, you know, your creative expression should be ignited and, you know, part of the healing process is being able to recover that, retrieve it, and then begin to be inspired and live creatively. The recovery date is an organized way for you to actually experience that. Um, your recovery journal is a, a consistent and um, ongoing continuity that brings these ideas that helps you to learn and apply. You know, you need to actually get into not only the study, but the actual application. In other words, when you really become, when you begin to become creative, I am now, you know, cooking, you know, I, I might need to cook uh, some soup with some fresh vegetables or, you know, um, some good hearty stock, um, you know, getting a hearty rice dish, beginning to creatively cook and prepare for yourself in ways that work for your body. That limbic, so that limbic resonance, you have a chance. You don't feel that you're spinning out, you know, tail spinning out in despair and in the cold emotionally. You know, in other words, that fire is within. Recovering that fire within is oftentimes a great healing hallmark of those people who have experienced traumatizing relationships, traumatic events, which really kind of mimic post-traumatic stress syndrome that you might see from war, you know, people who have served their country and now have issues where they get startled easily. They have, you know, uh, recurring thoughts that, you know, very similar to someone who has suffered a manipulative or controlling relationship where they hear, you know, they hear the yelling, they see the fits, they hear the messages again, you know, they're reliving it over and over and over again. In other words, the past is just seeping into the present and then there is no more present. It basically gobbles it all up. So it is very important to learn that where the attachment is should be in that limbic resonance. And so if you're in that hurting stage, that suffering stage, it's because your limbic resonance is still up against, you know, a, a, um, a, uh, a, 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 uh, uh, the word that I'm, it is a troubled attachment. It is a wounded attachment. It is a um, dis-ease, dis meaning lack of eased attachment. In other words, if you're with someone who is of that ilk, meaning malignant narcissist or psychopathic, and you're having a resonance with them, you're basically, you know, you're picking up on all, you're absorbing all that negativity, you know, that lack of empathy that is housed within that person. So you're like ingesting it energetically. It's important to understand that that is how the limbic brain, that aspect of your being operates. And it's important to reclaim that, reclaim your limbic experience and give it to where it is needed and deserved, not just, you know, um, taken advantage of. In other words, pay attention to your emotional body, that energy that bounces off of you, like happiness, joy, and passion, and creativity, and uniqueness, and then how that is your inspiration, and how that then gives you the ability to have limbic resonance and true connection with others, and giving it to where it is deserved, not just to the needy, not to someone who is just the taker, the malignant narcissist, or the psychopath who's trying to utilize 
others to support them and their needs. In other words, the status, you know, the people who, you know, look how many, you know, women, look how many this, you know, all that narcissistic supply, you know, no, no, thank you. Um, you can disengage from that energetically and then reattach to something that is more healthy. It's very important to have this tangible. So get, you know, something that is meaningful to you and that you can kind of have that intention of, of healthy resonance and connection to whether it's a piece of jewelry, whether it's a piece of fabric, whether it's something that reminds you a little booklet or something that you carry with you on your person that keeps that spark and that inner flame going. Um, and so you can really experience that limbic resonance with other people including eye contact, including vocal, you know, having a, a vocal sounding board um, and not depriving yourself of that and understanding that it is the deprivation or the disease and disorder of that which is causing the issue. So once you kind of get that figured out, you can begin to come to a, a softer landing place within yourself. And if you're being, if part of your healing journey has been that you're, you know, beating yourself up and da, 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 Begin to release that habit. Begin to understand that, you know, coming home within and finding that soft landing spot within yourself, it is okay to be okay. And it is a, a process of allowing. So really look at that. You know, what is narcissistic love, psychopathic love? What does attachment have to do with it? Like that Tina Turner song. What does love have to do with it? I mean, begin to really, you know, um, Understand also that a lot of the media tends to promulgate and support, you know, the unhealthy, the, you know, the uh, paparazzi, look at this, look at that, you know, begin to really, you know, distinguish between the healthy and the unhealthy, especially when it comes to what your, your limbic resonating system requires, um, begin to, begin to acknowledge that. Um, light within yourself or that sort of spark and it is can sometimes inspiration can be a passing thing it might only be there for five seconds so if you get that inspiration and you say I need to write it down get it on paper get it into something tangible that you can reference and then have that continuity of healing that'll really help restore that limbic resonance that you are so desperately in need of this is your buddy Peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out.